I wanted to show you how to create queries with the uh, SciView system. Um, it's a web-based system where you can go ahead and log in. So let me go ahead and do that. And it will show you all of your uh, SAS data sets that you have access to. And uh, it stores it in libraries, similar to how SAS does it. With um, These are considered live names here. And um, you can expand the libraries to then see each data set. Now if you go down a little bit below, you can see how um, the details of the data sets in their libraries could be edited and um, you can update their attributes. You can also see, zoom out a little bit here, um, that their detailed attributes are listed here on the right side. So you can um, see for this particular data set when it was created and so forth. So let's say I wanted to produce a query upon this to do edit checks to make sure that the data is correct. So the way to do that is to go up a little bit here. You can see the menus at the top. And the menu that we wanted to use is um, the query, which is the second under the tools here. And so, um, actually, before you apply the query, you may want to look at the data. So let me go back and show you what the data looks like by clicking on uh, the View button here. So if you were to click on View, it will show you um, kind of like a proc print using ODS of the data set. And you can see that these variables like adverse event term, uh, the, ter the verbatim term of the AE, along with all of its other variables. You can also change the view of, um, so instead of viewing just the variables, you can um, change it to show both the labels and the variables as an example. So in this case, we're viewing the variable label header, um, which makes it easier to uh, see what it pertains to. So let's go ahead and look at the query that I mentioned here. So if I go to the menu, query, um, you can narrow down that view of your data. Let me go ahead and adjust it here. And For example, let's say uh, you want it to narrow down the, the, um, the body system of that adverse event. And you can click on this Browse button, and it shows you all the valid um, body system that exists so that you don't have to type or remember what they are. So for example, I wanted to look at uh, gastrointestinal uh, type of items. You can select on that. And you can use different operators. For example, you can say things like it must equal exactly that value. Or you can say contains. So if you were to type just the gastro part, and you may not have known the exact spelling of everything, um, in this case, let me move over here. So if I were to type this value here, even if it's only partial, it will uh, capture the conditions that I want. Let me go ahead and erase these other ones because I was doing um, some testing earlier. So let's say I only have one condition in this query, and that is for the body system to contain the word you know, gastrointestinal. So if, if I were to apply that, um, it will show you an, an updated report. If you zoom out, you can see that there's only you know, six items here, and all of the conditions are applied for this gastrointestinal subset. So notice that that condition is spelled out up here. So if you look at the header a little closely, you can see that it shows you that particular query condition that we've applied. So now, if I wanted to add to that, I go back to the query, and I'm going to, um, uh, so let me go back, and then I'm going to add additional conditions. So let's say, in addition to narrowing down the body system, I want to look at the start date. So if you scroll down the list of variables here, the start date is this variable. And you can then have it on a specific date, or you can say anything greater than a particular date. So when I click on Browse, um, you might be able, to be able to type in a value or select a value. It's better. Date formats are tricky if you type the wrong date format. 
it may not like it. So in this case, you can select an existing date within the um, data set, or you can click on this dot 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 button that shows you a little calendar. So in this case, I can then go to a particular year. This data is old, so I go to 2004, for example. Let's go to 2004. And then I can pick a particular month. So I can click on here, let's say January, um, oops, go to January 1st. So whatever date I specify, even if it doesn't exist in the data, it, it, it shows me that option here. And then I can say uh, anything that happens greater than. So this operator is more for numeric or in this case date. And then when you have more than two conditions, you can use and or or. So I'm going to use and, meaning it must meet this condition and it meets the date condition. That is, having gastrointestinal and happening after this particular date. So once I apply these two conditions, um, notice that the query has narrowed down the view in only having four observations. And if you scroll over to the right, you can see the start date now happening only after January of 2004. Um, let me see, let me show you that again. So if you zoom in a little bit, you can see that uh, these are the dates that are only occurring, you know, within January um, of 2004 or after. So this is a nice way of doing compound expressions for your queries. So let me add one more expression. Currently, I have two conditions, you know, the body system and the, um, the, the date. So let's say if I were to add more, I can say, how about the severity of the, uh, or, or maybe the seriousness of the adverse event, as an example. Um, in this case, you can look at the different values for seriousness. It could be, you know, either blank or yes or no. Let's say I want to, yes, if it's a serious adverse event, then, um, you know, then, then show it to me. So uh, notice that when, when we have more than three different conditions here, um, we have the option to combine. Now, of course, we can still do the and or conditions, which, we, which I'm showing you here, but you can also combine them. And what that means is, if you were to combine these two first, um, if you look at the top here, it shows you the combination of the expression. I'm going to zoom in to show you. So in this case, it shows you that you're going to apply condition criteria 1 and criteria 2 first, and then after that, apply uh, you know condition 3. If you change to an OR condition, for example, um, you can see that I clicked on the OR radio button, that this is now changed to an OR. So this allows you to do really sophisticated and or combinations of um, conditions in your queries. So I'll go ahead and just um, leave and conditions here. And so they're all ands. And then once you have the and condition, you apply it, um, it may narrow down your uh, query to only one case where it's gastrointestinal and, you know, January 2004 and the uh, seriousness is yes. So once you have all of your nice conditions um, created, you can save this. So you can go in here and save uh, a new um, adverse event, um, maybe serious report. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save and note that I had a previous saved one similar called AE series. So you can go back and forth. In this case, if I were to save it, it retains all of my conditions and then I can generate that report again. Or I can go back to a previous different report if I select that and apply. Not the conditions are very similar, um, but I can then switch to any different types of queries I've saved in the past and then um, run that report when the data has been updated. Uh, there's more features in terms of adding derived variables and, um, you know, there's lots of different options on how to combine your multiple expressions, but hopefully this gives you a sense as to how you can build a query without, you know, writing a SAS program, 
but then in essence it is generating a, a SAS expression and then submitting it to the server to generate that uh, report um, against your SAS data.